you've said in the past that all companies should see themselves as a media company. The banks here today, you shouldn't see yourself as a bank, you should see yourself as a media company. I believe that. I think every company here looking at the list should have a daily podcast. Everyone. I don't, and, and I think what would you make as a podcast? You would have to go much higher. You would go into travel. You would go into finance advice. You would go into other things. But yes, I do believe that the white space and the next decade is going to be acting more like a media company than an advertiser because I do think the value that you have to bring the end consumer to penetrate their attention in a world of so much content is so much higher than it's ever been. And I think, I do think everybody here will have an editor in chief for their business before the next decade's done. Talk, talk us through the key insights as you'd see it from the, the Gary Vee content model. So what you're referring to is a, is a deck that I put out on LinkedIn and Medium and a lot of places which was kind of my gift to the, uh, the, the, the game where I try to explain to people how remarkable it is. DRock is filming me right now. Basically this breakfast probably is gonna turn into 17 to 25 pieces of content. Six of them will be one minute, one will be the entire breakfast. That'll be a YouTube, Facebook thing. Then there's probably six or seven clips that I think are good enough for Facebook and Instagram. Six quotes that are put in an image that may not be of today. Uh, one LinkedIn article that's very business centric. A podcast for sure. So just imagine how I'm thinking. The reason I started filming myself, which was difficult when I started doing it three and a half years ago because it you know, comes off unbelievably narcissistic. It wasn't something I was looking forward to being judged on, but I couldn't give up the sheer amount of content that videoing your whole day creates. And it is no question, if you look at what's happened to my profile, it is 100% on the back of film everything and then create 80 pieces of content a day from that day. How did you get over that obstacle of feeling you know, narcissistic and, and doing it all the time? Quickly. <laughs> my, my whole, listen, my whole career, when I launched an e-commerce website for my dad's liquor store, you know, my little world of liquor store owners and my family, like, I was judged, everybody said the internet was a fad. It's 22 years ago. When I started doing a YouTube show about wine at the height of my retail power, I was judged because our numbers flatlined for the first time in eight years. When I, I'm please. Sorry to interrupt you. I read one of your books and you said that when you started the videos, you, you weren't really being yourself, right? Yeah, the first 80 episodes, I was so scared. You know, I, every day, my day consisted of eight hours on the phone or email selling $100,000 worth of wine to a high net worth individual. If you've seen any of my content, I run it pretty loose and I was very concerned that I would turn off our, our base and you can see the first 80 episodes, I'm holding it back. And then it was building so much popularity, I'm like, if they like this, imagine if I really was my full self. And at that point I was like, okay, there's more upside in this than the short term law. And that's basically my, my barometer on everything is there's wins and losses, right? You know, and when the upside is far greater than the risk, I'm always willing to go all in. And, and that's probably why I've gotten so loud about this volume thing and a lot of my other points of view. I think the, t- the scale is tipped. Some of the biggest successes I've had with entrepreneurs or medium-sized businesses, especially in the car industry, was getting them to turn off all their marketing for a month to show them how ineffective their marketing was, which which then made them feel comfortable to invest in my pattern. I I do not think people, I I know, let me rephrase, it's not that I think, I I don't believe people have any clue how much money they're actually wasting on traditional and traditional digital it's a lot. It's a, I, I do believe there are companies in the Fortune 1000 running around that are putting 90 cents of every dollar directly in the garbage. If you just imagine how much upside that makes me feel they have, 